As soon as you see a diagram like that, without even reading it, you should think to yourself, this is all about enlargement. It's an enlargement type question. And I sometimes think it's a very good idea to appreciate you've got two triangles there. There's one, the triangle UVS. And you've got a smaller triangle TWS. And this triangle has been put on top of that one to produce that diagram. If you see it like this, then I believe it looks more like it's an enlargement question. But not only that, this is a safer version. I'll show you what I mean as I go through. OK, so we're told that VT is, w to v, uh, is parallel to VU. So that line is parallel to that line. And that's basically just telling us that these two triangles are what we call similar. They are similar triangles. One is an enlargement of the other. VU is 13.5, so let's put that on that diagram. And we'll put it on that diagram as well. ST is 6. That's 6 there. 6 centimetres. TU is 9. Now that's the bit that uh, is likely to go wrong with some people. If you put TU is 9 there, you're going to get some people that think that the question has got the ratio of 6 to 9. And that's going to make the whole question go wrong. And that's a very common mistake. Looking at this diagram and appreciating that it's a scale factor question, an enlargement question, but using the ratio of 6 to 9. Whereas if you put the information on this diagram, appreciating that that is 6 plus 9 is 15, then I won't say it won't go wrong, but it's less likely to go wrong. You're more likely to appreciate the ratio between these two triangles is 6 to 15, not 6 to 9. So that's why I think this diagram is safer. You can use that one, but be careful. SW is 8. Well, that's OK on either diagram. 8. Calculate the length of WT. WT. Now you can do this, as I say, with an enlargement and a scale factor. You can work out that 6 to 15, go from the small to the big, is an enlargement of scale factor 2.5. Two 6's and half of 6 is 15. 2 and a half times 6 is 15. This will work. There's nothing wrong with that method at all. But I prefer to write them down in ratio. What I mean by that is, WT is what I have to find. So put it over, it's what I call corresponding side on the larger triangle. So WT to 13.5 equals, going back to the small triangle, 6 to 15. Again, appreciating that if somebody else is going to go 6 to 9 and they're going to be wrong, 6 to 15. It is the same as this, but sometimes it actually can make things easier. WT to 13.5 equals 6 to 15. That means to say that I can pick up the calculator and work out what 6 over 15 multiplied by 13.5 is. If you do that on the calculator, where's my calculator? Here we go. 6 divided by 15 multiplied by 13.5. And that will give me the answer. 5.4 should be the answer. So I've done something silly on the calculator. I pressed the divide, I pressed the times button again. That was really careless. That's why I say in the exam, 
I do all my calculations twice on the calculator. One silly little slip like I just did then would get a question wrong and I know what I'm doing. I've still done something wrong there. I don't know what it is. I'm doing something silly. I'll do it again. Maybe I'm not. 6 divided by 15. Multiplied by 13.5. Now that is a very good example of understanding how your calculator works. Let me do that again. 6 divided by 15 multiplied by 13.5. Did something wrong and I've really no idea what it was. And I did that four times. But twice I managed to get the answer of 5.4 so I'm feeling a bit happy about that. And the other two answers were both different. You will be surprised, or not, how easy it is to make silly mistakes pressing just the buttons on the calculator. So do everything twice with the calculator. I think I've proved it to you now. Uh, for this, anyway, part A, two marks. One for you working out, either by using ratios or by using this scale factor. And one for the answer. Don't forget the units, although this time there's no marks for that. Always put in the units. That's question 7, part A. Question 7, part B asks you to work out the perimeter of the shape W, T, U, V. W, T, U, V. So we've got to do this distance, which we've just worked out as 5.4, so that's okay. The perimeter of W, T, U, V is going to be 5.4 plus 9 plus 13.5 plus. So I've got to find this distance first. Now writing down this sort of thing as you're doing it, it does two things. It helps you understand the question, but it gets the examiner understanding your way of thinking, which is always a good idea, so you can mark your work. Now again, if we go back to my diagram here, with my two triangles, I need to find that distance there. So first off, I actually have to find the whole distance VS. Then I can take away WS. Then I'll have what I want. So in fact, First, I need the whole of WS. Not an easy question. This one really needs quite a bit of thinking about. So, using my ratio idea, WS is in the large triangle. Put it over 8, which is in the small triangle. Will equal 15, the whole of that line which is in a large triangle, over 6, which is in a small triangle. I can rearrange that now, but WS equals 15 over 6 multiplied by 8. Dare I pick up this calculator and try it? Maybe I should do it without the way I'm... Oh no, come on, you can do it. 15 divided by 6 equals... Answer multiplied by 8 been a bit more careful that time and I should try it another way just to be sure but I think I'll go with that then VW equals 20 minus 8 so perimeter Show you working out 5.4 plus 9 plus 13.5 plus the 12 I've just worked out on a calculator or without. Depends how lucky you're feeling. And don't forget the units. Now that was a lot of work and a lot of thinking. 
but unfortunately not a lot of marks. There's one for the answer, and only one for sussing it out, which is a bit mean. But that's question seven.